Hello guys, in this episode, I'll give you the last six tips of my top 10 best tips on using Lightroom. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to episode 50 of my photography, Lightroom, and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France. Okay, this is part two of my top 10 best tips on using Lightroom. So let's not waste any time. Let me show you the number five of my tips. Okay, continuing from last week tips. Uh, I did four tips last week and now I'm gonna do six tips. And this is really guys, things that I have found useful using Lightroom uh, during the last five years as a professional photographer. So tip number five, using an FTP server. W one thing that happened is that I have people asking me for uh, photos all the time. Let's say that I shoot a, a hotel or that I shoot like for example, uh, my agent wants to have my latest photo of Paris. So this is my latest photo of Paris. You know, I have a collection with it, for example. And I want to send it to someone and I want it to look good. So for this, uh, the, the trick number one is you go into the web module. And uh, sometime when you download Lightroom, you, you only have basic galleries. Like you have the Lightroom Flash Gallery. Uh, you have the Lightroom HTML Gallery. And uh, there is a company called Hairtight that made uh, three types of galleries that you can download for free. Um, so that's one of, of the gallery, for example, it's like, a, and of course it can be completely personalized. You know, you can change the background and everything. That's one which is called the auto viewer. And then you've got, that's a fun one. It's called the postcard viewer, you know, click on the photo and it zoom on it. Um, and then you have the, that's the one I use all the time, the Heritite Simple Viewer. But right now it doesn't look good because it's kind of too small. So if you don't have the Heritite um, galleries on, what you can do is you go to Google, the Good Eyes Google, and you type Heritite Lightroom. You will come to this page, Lightroom Journal Heritite Interactive Wealth Gallery. And on this page, it will give you, the, not only it will give you the links to download all these three galleries for free, but it will also show you exactly where to put it if you're a Mac user or Windows XP user, so that it appears in your Lightroom. It's all there, it's very simple. Three files to download, you just unzip the file and you put it here where it says where you should put it. Okay, so that was my tr uh, tip number five. Now the tip number six, is um, now for the tip number six to work, you've got to have a hosting service. And I have got several hosting service. And then you go here into FTP server, you go into uh, custom settings and you put in your FTP data uh, that you will get from the from your hosting service. And once you put in your, your um, FTP data there, I created a server pass. Now what is that? Uh, I, you t I typed in www slash J. J for gallery. Why did I do that? Is because now let's say that I want to make a gallery to send it to someone. So uh, I'm gonna make this a bit nicer. So I'm gonna change the background. I'm gonna put the background into black. Uh, I'm gonna make um, the size of my photo much bigger. Okay, I'm gonna make a title like my latest photos. And um, I'm going to make, for example, the uh, the borders, the photo borders a bit smaller. I don't like when it's so big. I'm going to make it something like that. Okay, now it's something that I like. You can, of course, go over here, which is what I do as a Lightroom preset, and you can save it by clicking the plus. So don't you don't have to redo all that, which is what I did. I have a, a preset that I call Web Gallery Hotel because I usually send it to the hotel manager. And all I have to do is I select the photos and it's, it's already there. Okay, so once I've got the gallery that I like, all I do now that I've put in my FTP data, I go into uh, put in subfolder Paris June, and now, uh, and then I click on upload, and about a minute later, uh, you have the website here on, on the web. I can just send that link, and look at the link, it's photosearch.com slash J slash Paris June. But all I did was put in Paris June. Now I can put anything that I want, and it's going to be www.photosearch.com slash J and whatever I've put there. And I just, you know, send it to my customers and, and they have the feeling like, wow, I made a website just for them, you know. Uh, and it only took me like one minute. And that's something that I do all the time. The only problem with that is that these galleries do not play on iPhone and iPad because they use Flash. So if you want them to, be, to play on iPhone and iPad, you have to go uh, with the Lightroom HTML gallery 
which uh, I must say is a lot less nice. But you can still, you know, make things bigger and uh, um, and uh, you can still customize it. But it's not as nice as the hair type galleries. Okay, so tip number eight. That's something that I do all the time. When I have to select, you know, for example, if I take a portrait of someone and uh, I don't know which photo to select between this one, this one, this one, you know, this one. What I do is that I select all the photos I have hesitation on and I press the N key. The N key is the survey mode. And now when you do a survey mode, I said, mm, no, I don't like this one. Up automatically, this one goes bigger. Um, no, I don't like the expression on this one. Up, this one makes bigger. And you know, it's like Highlander. At the end, there can be only one. And then I put a special note on this one. So the survey mode is something that I use a lot. Okay, uh, next trick, meta search. Now, I on my Lightroom, I have 61,670 photos. So it's kind of hard sometimes to find photos. And one thing that I do to, uh, to look for photos, when you click here on all your photograph, and I actually have two Lightroom galleries, and both have over 60,000 photos in it. And for example, if I, uh, I, I did not put in a keyword, and I remember I took a photo in May or June of this year, what you can do is you can just go up here to catalog, you go to all photograph, and uh, you go to metadata, and on the left, you've got, uh, for, uh, you've got dates. If you don't have dates, you can just go here and you make sure that you select date. And there you have, I have all the photos in my catalog since I started photography. And uh, well, let's take 2013 and let's go for March. And uh, here you have all the photos from the, the month of March. Let's go for May. And I've got all the photos from the month of May. I can even choose uh, May, but just the ones taken with 7D because I've got two camera. I've got the Mark II and the 7D. So here I can put a second metadata, which is camera, and I can just take 7D. I only have the photos from the 7D, from the May. And I can even say, no, I also want the lens. You know what? I, I remember it was a 17 and 40 lens. Okay, so now it's only 7D with a 7 and 40 lens. And so it's another good way, metadata of your photos is another good way to find photos and that I find very useful. Now, the last tip is one that I find very useful and I use very often. I'm back in my collections with my latest photo of Paris. And one thing that happens often is, uh, let's say that I have to make a presentation to somebody with my latest photo and I know I'm gonna have to do a file that's gonna be 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels, for example. Okay, so what I do is I go to the print module and um, I go to custom package, page setup, and then on the, on the format, on the paper size, I go to manage custom size and I'm going to put, for example, 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter. It's just actually, it's just to get a ratio. Okay, and um, I make sure that I have no borders, no margin at all. So I just created a paper, which is 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. And now, I, let me erase that. I can just play around with my photo and make a little presentation in no time. You can do it in Photoshop, but doing it in Lightroom is so much easier and faster. Uh, you wouldn't believe, you know, I can make a presentation in really no time. And uh, now if you want to, uh, let's say, I don't like the, okay, let me just continue on this. Um, yeah, let's me put this one like this. Okay, now the, the good thing is to make sure you snap, you know, and uh, you have two ways of snapping, to the grid or to the cell. I put the grid, it gives you a bit more freedom to move things around, okay? And you can make sure the space are the same between the photos. Uh, you know, the, for example, I want them all to stick together for, for now. Okay, and... Um, now let's say you don't like the framing of this one. You know, you wanna change the framing. Well, you just press the command key or the control key and you can just move around that photo. Or I can do the same thing here, I can just move around that photo. Okay, and uh, let's put another one here which is gonna be very long. For example, something like that, you know. And, um, and one here. And I mean, in Photoshop, it would take me an hour to do that. And I do that in a few minutes. 
using uh, using Lightroom. Okay, it's I made like a special collage, you know, and um, now I've got some kind of margin there, uh, which must be coming from. I don't know. I don't know. I must have left something, but you get the idea. Now, once you've done the collage, uh, you can you need it as a JPEG. So instead of going to print job, and that's my latest tip, you just go to printer JPEG file. Make sure your file resolution is at 300 DPI and you just click print to file. OK, let me put it on a desktop and let's call this collage. And it's going to render all the photos and uh, and make one JPEG file. And I use that all the time to make advertisement, you know, when I need to do something very fast. Now, if I can just go to the desktop, uh, it took just a, a few seconds and I've got a collage and here it is. OK, I've got this little margin here as a problem, but I can even open up in Photoshop and take that out. Usually I, I add text in Photoshop and that's something that I use all the time. So there you have it. That's my best tips on using Lightroom over the years. Hope you like it. And um, let me show you now uh, my new tutorial with Jean-Michel Bert. Um, let me show you the presentation. It's something I'm very excited about. Hello, guys. My name is Serge Ramini. I'm a French photographer living in Paris. And today I'm here to present to you a tutorial I've been hoping to have for many years. One of my biggest inspiration on photography when I started about eight years ago is a man called Jean-Michel Berth. He's also a French photographer, actually half French, half German. He's been a photographer for over 30 years and he became over the last 10 years in France a real phenomenon. He became one of the biggest black and white artists in France and probably in the world. Uh, he started with films and he's been shooting with films and with a very old camera. He's been shooting with a camera from 1959. And uh, he started a whole series on Paris and this series became books, books that you can see here. It's like big coffee table books. For example, this is called The Lights of Paris. Uh, this book is called The Lights of London, you know, with huge, beautiful black and white photo. This is, for example, The Lights of Tokyo. His uh, fine art prints are also big prints. Uh, they are being sold in galleries in Paris, New York, Tokyo, all over the world. He's actually one of the highest best-selling artists on black and white. And I became friend with him over the years and asked him to show me how he would post-process his photos because they have something very unique. About a year ago, he stopped doing film to go to digital with the Nikon D800 that came out. And he tested the D800 and he said it was a good enough camera to, uh, to do his work. And from that moment on, I've been uh, asking him all the time to reveal to the world his retouching technique. And he finally accepted. I went down to Jerusalem as he was doing his number eight boot called The Lights of Jerusalem. And he shows there how he takes the photo and how he retouches them. And I can tell you something. I've been teaching Photoshop and Lightroom for seven years. The way he does it, it is so unique. It's so inspired how people used to do it in the film days. And honestly, I think it's the most powerful post-processing technique I've ever seen. I think you will learn more in this two hours course um, than I can ever teach you. It's been a tutorial that I've been waiting for for many years. It's on sale on my website. Um, we have a release promo code that uh, you can find here. If you type in that code, you will get a 20% discount. It's just for a few weeks because we're releasing this course. And um, now one thing you should know, the photos that he's retouching, you will not get the raw file. The reason is this, you can find this photography in galleries all over the world and each photo costs over $4,000 to buy. So there was no way you could give away the raw files, but you get JPEG files so you can see the final result and you will see how he created this photo. It's very easy to follow. Uh, you don't need the latest version of Photoshop. It's not Lightroom, it's Photoshop only. We did it with Photoshop CC, but it probably would work with Photoshop too. So it's, um, you will see, it's a beautiful technique. I'm really happy. Here is the four projects we have been doing and the four final results that you will learn by watching this tutorial. Go to my website and check it out. It's really well, well invested money. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, guys, I hope you liked that tutorial. I love the work of Jean-Michel Berthe and you should really check out his work and his tutorial. It's the best I have seen in a very long time. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week. Wow, 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 wow.